Cherise Carter. And I'm Winnie Chiwa. The name of our project is Janelle and Tobago. Beautiful, beautiful people. people. <laughs> photography book. Um, we spent the last few months traveling around Trinidad and Tobago capturing images of um, citizens, visitors, just people that we find in the streets and basically have a good conversation with them to get some information to put in our book. So we ended up with quotes, some of them a little more personal stories, but that's the gist of what it was. Alright, the inspiration behind the book is Humans of New York. I don't know if anyone is familiar, but it's a photographer. He basically does street photography. We wanted to add a little training player to it because we know the persons that we may bounce up here are a lot different from those in New York. And of course, the stories would have been unique as well. Yeah, so we had to add a little training slant to it. So when you're going through the book, you'll hear ah and me and what. A lot of training dialect is in the book. Um, we try to incorporate that as much as possible to make it as authentic as possible. So for instance, we met this homeless guy in San Fernando and he actually was a postman before um, he got into drugs and so we started to talk to him and he's like, I'm not homeless, I live in a house with three other people, I only look in this way because I have a cold and he proceeded to take out his ID to show us. Now that is the end of the project and we have the book on display, um, we can say we're grateful that it's completed. Praise but Jesus. <laughs> that was the hardest project I think we ever Effort had to, to do, do, you know, from concept, from, you know, just conceptualizing and trying for it to be different from yeah. not just making a photocopy of what somebody else did. It was, yeah. just, it was just hard. But I mean, right now we just relieved, <laughs> sleepy, <laughs> hungry. Very, very happy. Hi, my name is Ingle Watson and my project is a website titled www.trendbagotings.com. a website dedicated to showcasing the work of our local artisans, our jewelry designers, clothing designers, one location, one forum online where persons can display their products and especially persons who do not have a fixed storefront. The inspiration behind my project, honestly, I love to shop. For a number of years, I would have had friends who were clothing, but I would have made friends with local clothing designers and patronized them. But recently, I was introduced to our local pop-up markets. I realized that we are such a talented people and there's not a lot of room or there's any dedicated space to showcase the world. Behold the one dimension, there's nothing left to mention. difficult things about doing this project, well actually it's more than one difficult thing. One was the fact that my project depended so much on me having to schedule time to meet persons, schedule time to go out and take photos of persons' products. That's how I feel now that it is over. I feel relieved. I feel very accomplished and I'm proud of what I've done. Despite a lot of the challenges and the setbacks, I know that this is something that can move beyond SBCS. I'm looking at moving it beyond SBCS because we need this. Our artisans need this. I am Kellyanne Lecox. And I'm Robert Burton. The name of our project is Brain Crush Educational Card Game. behind Brain Crush came from watching young children needing something to do and at the same time be educated about it. Brain Crush, on the other hand, 
allows you to be certain of the content that your children are using. At the same time, based on the colors, they would actually be attracted to the game. The most difficult part in creating Brave Crush was doing the research to get the right questions and answers. We also needed to find stuff that was close, very similar answers that were very similar to each other. So it would be a bit of a trivia for those playing the game. I feel a sense of accomplishment because the win great crush was a challenge and I think that is what Robert and I wanted, a challenge. And what we did is challenge ourselves to the weakest thing that we had throughout our whole experience at SBCS. To even sell the idea was hard. So at times we really had some downtime to say that probably this will work out but then we go where we know we're strong at but I think this is exactly what it is we were supposed to produce and we did a very good job. Hi, my name is Richard Alexander, this is Adana King and the name of our project is Vintage Cars of Chilean Tobago, it's a website. <laughs> Vintage Cars of Trinidad and Tobago website is actually a website where people who love vintage cars, lovers of vintage cars, actually go and see um, vintage cars from yesterday in 1900, the history of um, people's cars in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> pictures of the vintage cars, um, even videos of people expressing their personal experiences of owning a car, of the, uh, the challenges they have with the car, and actually um, the joy that they have having this car. The reason why we chose this is because we, we realized that in Trinidad and Tobago, they tend to focus more on um, the speed and aspect of the cars, the brand new. Um, so with with vintage cars, no, nobody has ever done it before. And I think there's a, a niche market where we could really elaborate on any future. How I feel um, now that this project is finished. Um, for the past uh, semester or so while I was doing this, I felt like this big boulder was on my back. And and now that I'm finished, I feel so happy, so elated that everything turned out well. Um, make some modifications to the, the project. Um, there's some um, aspects where we could do a little better, but this is not a one-time thing where we finish the project, so we stop. So uh, we want to go on and we will get all these pickups on the contract. You get it? Vintage Cars of Chilean Tobago. Check it out. Vintage Cars of Chilean Tobago. My name is Joel Mohammed and the name of my project is Street Confessions. So Street Confessions touches on the lighter side of life. Um, what, I, what I mean is, you know, those topics and discussions that we have in our own little circles that we rather not discuss on the outside. Well, my intention was to go out there and have you you know, expose those secrets and, and those things that they really want to remain, you know, covered up. I was there to uncover that, you know what I mean? Confessions was kind of an insight into your mind, um, the way you think, the things you would not say, the things you may say, and how you would treat with that particular issue at the time. So what at SBCS, um, there was a unit called Practical Skills in Radio Production. That was the bullet of Street Confessions actually, where I went to the road and did the same thing with a, a handheld recorder and um, asked questions and put people on the spot kind of thing. Um, I had every intention though um, for my final production to make Street Confessions come to life visually. Um, I really wanted to connect with people, that, that's what I love to do. Open, we on our to spread this good 
The most difficult aspect of street confessions was the fact that I had to go out there and interview people. Now, this was my idea, this was my brainchild. And I asked myself, like, you know what, this is not something I'm very comfortable with, you know, so why street confessions? But, you know, I have this knack where I like to connect with people and, and, and relate with people on a personal level. And what you all may not know is that I'm very much an introvert. But um, with your grades on the line and, you know, time going, and strange enough, the first um, cut, I would say, of Street Confessions, um, I had a co-host and he was the guy that was supposed to do it. And on one of the shoots, he came late and we had to go because light was going and who else had to take up the, the, the mantle and do it? Me. Alright, tell me something. Um, what is your take on women in terms of men uh, to keep themselves? How do I feel now that I've completed Street Confessions? Um, a sense of accomplishment. Everything I set out to do, I achieved. Um, the intent was ready to have my viewers engaged from beginning to end, have them laughing from beginning to end. And at the same time, you know, not to say they will learn new things, but actually kind of familiarize yourself with, you know, hey, you know what, I probably did that before, he did that before, or that happened to me too. You know, so the whole idea, like I said just now, was to bring my that familiarity to television. And um, I think I really did that. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to doing episode 2, I don't know when. But um, my intention is to carry this on beyond episode 1 and SBCS. So we'll see how that goes. Hi, my name is Carolyn Villafana. I am the creator, producer, and the inspiration behind Wish Child. Wish Child is an audio album of original songs based on the local curriculum in Trinidad Tobago, the primary school curriculum. Uh, within the album, there are six songs as I mentioned, three of them on science and three of them on social studies. Like thank you, good morning and please. Vision behind it, I'll say we start with my children. I have two boys and uh, they come home from school and they have a lot of work. And you gotta do all this work in a concise amount of time, but also I wanted them not to just to regurgitate information. I wanted it to grow with them. One of the songs, which is Respect, which I did a DVD for, um, Respect covers many, many, many areas that have been taught from infant straight up to standard four. I have grown in technical ability, but I've also grown in knowledge. And uh, for me, completing this is a great, 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 great step towards my future. Alright, the projects that you would have seen are really the result of uh, months of hard work, sacrifice, sleepless nights, and I would even argue discipline. The students may not see it as being a, an effort in discipline, but it is actually because they were able to produce their work and to submit their work on time. Uh, there were many challenges that these students would have faced along the way, challenges that would have been unique to certain projects. Uh, the students were given free reign on their project ideas. Um, they were not in any way limited, it, the, you know, it was really up to the students to decide exactly what it is they wanted to do. And you would have seen from that range of projects that they would have uh, taken that challenge on. Of the lights are shining, I close my eyes from the things that can bring me down to a different girl, I let go of... The idea of the wish is that the projects do not remain at SBCS, and that really today's uh, presentation would really just be uh, the launch pad for taking the projects outside of the campus. The students really are the ones who should see uh, the greatest potential in their projects. Uh, what they should really try to do from today is to work on them, uh, continue working on them, perfecting them, um, polishing them up a little bit more so that we can turn on our televisions and see those projects or that we could go into a bookstore or surf the web and actually come across uh, like the website that has been done today.
can you do 